this is uh, Felix from Automation Elix. Today we'll be continuing with our PLC question and answer examples. So I'm doing another example today. We'll be doing this problem here. Uh, two motors in a pumping station facility. Both motors run on the activation of a start push button switch. Just take note of this of a start push button switch. The activation of a stop push button switch stops motor 1 immediately and then motor 2 after 10 seconds. So if you are you are a bit good on the programming is the moment you click pause and then um, you try to do to solve this problem and then afterwards you compare it with my answer but there's no answer to programming as long your program is running correctly but um, if you have got like uh, problems in getting the code to run you can always refer to my program okay so i'll be starting isp soft now and then uh, we'll be starting our new project uh, it's pumping facility that's the name this pumping uh, the cpu type is an sa2 i will leave it like that um, so the first thing that you do is uh you are supposed to have a cross reference table and then you go on a uh, program organizing units this one i leave it like this so when you cross reference table you have to write down and know the number of ios that you have so what I know is that I have got a start push button. Uh, it's a boolean, and the address is x zero. That's my my pattern. And the comment, it's a start push button. And I'll just I'll just leave it like that. I'll just leave it like that, and then uh, I don't want it to clo auto close. And then the second one is a stop. Always take note on the identifier. Don't put a space bar. You must put an underscore there, uh, so that you don't get an error. And then uh, this one is a stop push button. In the comment section, you can write whatever you want to know in terms of which, which will make it easier for you to identify the function of your io so this one is a stop i just added the state yeah and then uh on our our output we have y0 which is motor uh, this is motor one you rather don't space it all if you want to space use an underscore so i have motor one and then uh, this one is motor. We just leave it as a motor on the comments. And then I have motor two. Uh, so I just added two there. So I think I'm done with my IOs. So this is what we have in our cross reference table always take note of the IOs even if you are it helps you even, even when you are sizing your PLC so I'm gonna add a couple of networks and then uh, I'm going to start um, so usually when you are dealing with motor the first thing you have to do definitely before you start thinking is to put a ledge circuit most probably is the easiest way so my stop button is normally closed usually when you're simulating on a software like this without a plc connected you put it as this way but when you are working with a in real life when you have got your normally closed wired to your plc it's usually this state because the stop button on the wiring on the actual wiring is normally closed so it's always providing a power to that to this conduct here so it will be always closed so but when you are simulating our stop is this way i want to explain that at a later stage so this is my start mm. and then this is my stop and then this is my motor one my motor one 
to hold here okay so in the in the comment you just say uh, uh, a start start um, start button runs both motors I'm just doing it the right way so that um even uh it helps you when you're actually coming back to your program after let's say two years you find out that oh you won't you, you won't even know what you are doing so this is the best way you have to comment your programs so after this I'm going to also put another network for network um for motor two but remember this motor two runs also on um on the activation of the start button so we need the start button so this is my motor two and then um this is my start push button and then this is my motor two but in this case now what is stopping motor two was whatever which is in here in between a leg circuit is the one which is gonna disable motor one because when you press start this one will latch and then what is going to disable this motor one is the stop button so in this case on motor two you are not going to disable it with the stop button it, it will be disabled by the delay it will be disabled by the delay so i'm gonna put a a delay a delay circuit right so i will say delay this so i'm commenting on the network delaying uh-huh and then i'll leave it like that so what i'm going to do now so as soon as motor one switches off as soon as motor one switches off so i need a coil huh and then i'll put my timer here tmr um i put my timer here and then um i'm going to hold this with an internal relay let's just say m0 and then i put in an, an uh an m0 there m0 so as soon as motor one switches off so what i'm going to do i'm going to put a falling edge so a a a a falling edge a falling edge instruction when motor one switches off it sends it sends a pulse it sends a pulse a, a positive pulse to 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 to, to this m0 and then as soon as m0 detects that pulse it will hold in here like, same as what a normal leg circuit does so a falling as soon as motor one switches off we get a a signal we got a pulse a positive pulse to switch on this one as soon as motor one switches off we get a pulse to m0 to latch something like that same way as a if we've got a, a rising edge here if you've got a rising edge as soon as motor one switches on you get a pulse so this this one works with a, a device that will be going on this one works with the device that will be going off you see so it's that way so let's say motor one so as soon as motor one switches off we get a signal to latch here to latch here so um, now i'm going to give my timer this is a t0 t0 and then uh what i'm going to do now the time base the time base of this timer is a uh, hundred milliseconds so for what you do with the time base like this for you to write let's say uh, one second so one sec is equal to 10 in a in a delta PLC timer depending which timer you are using there's a range I think from T0 to T60 or one something it's hundred milliseconds and then as you'll be going on they change their time basis 
So for us to put uh, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, we must put a uh, hundred. So I'll put hundred here. So with this hundred, this time I will, as soon as motor, this motor force switches off, this count time is going to start counting one, two, three, four, up to 10. As soon as it gets to 10, it will switch off this now. So this is my T0. It will disable motor 2. It will disable motor 2. So, but after that, this one also must be, must be reset because if this one doesn't reset, the moment you want to switch on the system next time, it will, it will, it will, it, it's not going to, to, switch, to switch on because this one will be still energized. The next time you want to run it, as long as this one is not deactivated, you're going to be able to run only motor 1 but not motor 2 because this conduct will be open. So I will have to, 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 to deactivate this one. Oh, what am I doing here? Uh, Lord. Uh, something like this. So uh, this will be my motor 2. My motor 2. So um, I will check my communication manager and then we simulate our program. Mm, this one I start driver three. Oh, two communication. Is driver three? This one is set. Then I download. Then I download. So we go online. And then don't forget to put your PLC in run mode. Yes, we are in run now. So as you can see, it's off now. So the other thing that you must be careful with, especially when you are simulating. Remember, when you are simulating a push button, you have to make sure you force it on and then you force it off. That so that's the state of a push button. If you force it on and you leave it on, it will gonna, it is going to interfere with your program because. Uh, you are not simulating exactly what is happening in the real world when you've got the real actual wires. So when you're simulating a push button with force on and force off that instant, because it's a push button, it closes and comes to its initial place. So I'm going to force this one on and then I force it off. Right. As you can see, both motors are on now. Both motors are on. So what will happen when you press a... Uh, the, the stop button so this one I'll force it on motor one is off this one is counting five seven eight nine ten and then it switches off once it switches off this motor the motor two which was in here is the one which deactivates the timer and then you are back to your initial state so what must happen remember this one that that error that I was just saying now I forced this one but I didn't Activate it back to its original state because it's a push button. It's not a, a latch button So I must put it back to its initial position so that I will be able to run again. So I'll force on Then I'll force off That's what you have. So this one force it on You see then I must force it off When you get to our timer There it is so that's how we we solve um, this kind of a problem. Mm, that's how we solve it. Uh, let me go back to the initial question. Uh, I mean, both motors run on the activation of start push switch. The activation of the stop switches stop switch stops motor one immediately, and then after um, and then motor two after ten seconds. Which is what we have. So, if you guys have got any question to how I've done it, you just uh, comment below, and then uh, we'll see. So, I'll be keep doing question, and then I put an answer a question, and that's how you exercise your programming skills, how you exercise your mind. If you don't practice, you will never be a good programmer. You have to keep on doing questions, questions, and then I think. Uh, that's it. Uh, see you in the next lesson. Uh...
Thank you, guys.